What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to write the equation of a perpendicular bisector. So we're going to go through these three examples, and let's get started. So for this first example here, we have points A and B. A is at 4, 2. So let's just plot this real quick. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're going up 2. So this is point A. And point B is at 8, 6. So this was over 4, so we're going to go over 4 more. We're going over 1, 2, 3, 4 more. So this is where 8 is. And now we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's B. And the goal here is to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. So the concept here is when you have a line segment like this, the perpendicular bisector is a line that goes through the middle and it's perpendicular to the original line segment that we're looking at. So if, if you could kind of visualize things here, this is what our perpendicular bisector is going to look like. Now, the reason why I'm a big fan of drawing these out in the beginning is because the steps that I give on the side are obvious if you could visualize what's actually happening here. So the first thing we want to find if we're looking for the midpoint is we're going to label this first point as x1, y1, and this point as x2, y2. And just know the midpoint is the sum of the x coordinates divided by 2. And then the y value of the midpoint is the sum of the y coordinates divided by 2. So our midpoint here for AB is going to be 4 plus 8 divided by 2 comma, and now we have 2 plus 6 divided by 2. So if we look at this, we just simplify. This is 12 divided by 2, which is 6, and then we have 8 divided by 2 is 4. And if we look at where this landed, see 6, 4 is exactly here. So our drawing is definitely checking out with what we're finding here. So that's the first step, is to find the midpoint. Now the next thing we need to know is what is the slope of the line segment AB? So the slope formula, lowercase m, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our slope in this case, if we use the formula, is 6 minus 2 over 8 minus 4. And this works out to 4 over 4, which is just equal to 1. So that's the second step here. And if we wanted to use the graph, just know the slope we could find by just counting the rise over the run. And we're going up 1 over 1. So that's another way of seeing the slope is equal to 1. But now, what we're going to do with this information is we have to take the opposite reciprocal of the slope from step 2. Now, this step 3 could be a little tricky for people, so just know when you're taking the opposite reciprocal, just a quick example of this, like something like 1 half, you flip the fraction to 2 over 1, which would make it 2, and then you just change the sign, in this case, from positive to negative. If I had something like negative 3 fifths, this would change to a positive, and the fraction would flip to 5 thirds. And if you had something like a whole number, like 3, it would change to a negative, and imagine this as 3 over 1, and it would flip to uh, negative 1 over 3 when we take the opposite reciprocal. So when I want to find my perpendicular slope, the negative reciprocal of positive 1, imagine 1 over 1, is going to be negative 1 over 1, which simplifies to negative 1. So here's the slope that we're going to use, and that's the end of the third step. So now, the, all we have to do now at this stage is write the equation of the line. And the formula we're going to use is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we're using the midpoint that we found here, and we're going to use the slope that we found here. Now, this might throw people off because we already named a as our x1, y1. But just know that we're using this point here to write the equation of a line. So we're going to have y minus the y coordinate is 4 equals the slope. The perpendicular slope is negative 1, and we have x minus x1, our x coordinate at the midpoint is 6. So we could stop here, but if we want to work this out, we're just going to distribute the negative 1. We have y minus 4 equals negative x plus 6. And now you could add 4 to both sides. And we'll see that the equation of our perpendicular bisector is y equals negative x plus 10. And you could imagine here, if this thing were to keep going, you could see how this line is heading up to this location here. That's where the y-intercept is, and that would be up at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the graph checks out and reinforces our answer. Now, for some examples like this one, we need to throw the steps away and just think outside the box. So what I mean by that is when I look at this example, I notice right away that the two points that we're focusing on have the same x-coordinate. So anytime you have two points with either matching x-coordinates or matching y-coordinates, that means you're either going to have a vertical or horizontal line. So the point 3, negative 1, if we sketch this, is going to the right three units and down one over here. And then 3, 5 is to the right 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this line segment that we're finding the perpendicular bisector of 
is a vertical line. Now, if we want to find the midpoint using the formula, we can. And remember, we just add the x coordinates together. So we have 3 plus 3, we're dividing by 2. And then we add the y coordinates, negative 1 and 5 together, and divide that by 2. So our midpoint, we could evaluate now by just simplifying. We have 6 divided by 2 is 3. And this gives us 4 divided by 2 is 2. Our midpoint is at the location 3, 2, which is visually obvious from the graph. But what I notice here is that this line we're starting with is vertical. So our perpendicular bisector is going to be a horizontal line like this. And just know anytime you have a horizontal line, a horizontal line, the equation is always in the form y equals k, where k is a constant. And that value k is always where the line hits the y-axis. And notice it hits the y-axis at 2. So the equation of our perpendicular bisector is just going to be y equals 2. Now, once again, the reason I'm throwing the steps out the window is technically a vertical line has no slope. The slope is undefined. And in this case, the green line has a slope, lowercase m, of 0. So it just helps to think outside the box here and just know how to write the equation of a horizontal line. And our solution here is y equals 2. Now, for this last question here, we could draw things out to help bring this question to life, or we have the option of just jumping right into it. But just so this makes sense, we'll go ahead and sketch this. We have A is at 0, 0. B is at 6, 8. So we're going over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So B is over here. And that was over 6 units. So C is at 8, 4. So now I'm just going to start here and go to the right 2. So that's at 8, and we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's our location for C. And the goal here is to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector of segment BC. So I could draw all the lines in for the triangle here, but remember, all I need is to focus in on segment BC. Now, from this, it's visually obvious that the midpoint is here, and that looks like it's going to be at 7, 6. But if I want to be precise, I should definitely use some formulas here. So I'm finding the midpoint between B and C. So I'm going to add the x coordinates, 6 plus 8, and divide by 2. And then I'm doing 8 plus 4 divided by 2. So when we simplify that, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So this is, in fact, the midpoint, 7, 6. So the visual does check out, but it helps to reinforce it with an actual formula. So that's the first step. Now we want to find the slope of this line segment. And if we want, we could use the rise over run method here. To find the slope using rise over run, we could say that the rise over the run, in this case, so we're saying, yeah, the rise over the run is equal to, we're going down two units, and we're going to the right one unit. So the slope of BC is negative 2. So if our slope is negative 2, our perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal of negative 2. So negative 2, visualize that as negative 2 over 1 for a moment. And negative 2 over 1, if we flip that and negate it, it's going to become positive 1 over 2. So once again, we're just changing the sign to positive, and we're flipping it to 1 half. So this is the slope that we're going to use, and this is the point that we're going to use to write the equation of our line. So you could visualize it already if our slope is 1 half. This tells us that our perpendicular bisector is going to be looking, looking like this. Now, if we wanted to, we could just draw this line all the way to the y-axis and identify the y-intercept. But to be most precise, we're going to use the equation of a line. We have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And remember, the midpoint is the point we're going to use for the equation of our line. So technically, this is like our x1, y1. So now let's finish this problem out. We have y minus y1 is equal to 6 equals the slope is positive 1 half. And we have x minus our x value here, x1, is equal to 7. So we could distribute here. We have 1 half. Let's just make that a lot neater. We have 1 half times x minus 1 half times 7 is 7 over 2. And now we'll add 6 to both sides. But 6 on this side, we'll call it 12 divided by 2. And now this will simplify nice. We'll have y equals. 1 half x plus negative 7 plus 12 is 5. So this is the equation of our perpendicular bisector. So you see, in this case, it actually made sense to use the formula because 5 over 2, 2 and a half is a decimal value. And it might be hard, might be hard to eyeball that just by looking at the y-axis. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on writing the equation. 
Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on writing the equation of a perpendicular bisector. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.